You're drifting away from the faith of your fathers. You're drifting away from prayer, drifting away from the Bible reading, drifting away from the family altar, and only ruin and the heartbreak and the homebreak lay in the direction of backsliding. I am coming out to help bring you back, if I can, to the fold. Give me a burden for souls, Lord. Give me a love for the lost. Let my heart bleed as I own, Lord. Give me a burden for souls. On New Year's Day, 1923, Angelus Temple, the largest church in the city, opened its doors to the public for the first time. McPherson had managed to raise $300,000 for the grand building, leading one critic to say that Sister Amy had put the cost in Pentecost. Along about 3 o'clock on Sunday, there would be a line of people down Glendale Boulevard for two blocks. And at 5 o'clock, the doors would open and 5,000 people would course into this building and fill every seat. McPherson had built one of the first mega churches in the United States. And she designed it to look more like a place for Hollywood movies than a place of worship. And in comes Mrs. McPherson with a huge bouquet of roses. And the moment the crowd sees her, 5,000 people start applauding wildly. Friends, let's give our lives to Jesus Christ. It's really become healed in Jesus. Once on the Angelus Temple stage, Sister Amy used her unique blend of humor, charisma, and storytelling to deliver the age-old evangelical message about salvation through Jesus Christ. Each service built to the same climax, the altar call, or the invitation to come forward and be born again. Everyone stand it says, I need Jesus in my life. Quite often, people that come down, their lives are changed from that very night, and they become a Christian. Come on, young man, come on down from that balcony. She published monthly magazines, and just at the moment when radio was born, she built her own Christian radio station. KFSG broadcast Angelus Temple sermons, healing services instructing listeners to place their hands on their radio sets, and serial dramas such as The Adventures of Jim Trask, Lone Evangelist. Some nights the signal reached as far as Australia. When she first envisioned the station, she said that there were some 200,000 radio receiving sets in, Los, in the Los Angeles area. But within just a few years, radio was ubiquitous in nearly every home. And she had the foresight to ride the crest of that wave. My friends, if you're starving, tonight there's salvation. There's a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Shortly before she died, Sister Amy applied for a license for an experimental television station. And so had she lived, she surely would have been one of the first televangelists. 